Okay. Now this is what I, um, yes, this is from the first day. So this is actually very easy. Of course, until you know how to do it, it's not that easy. But once you see how to do this, this is very easy. This is much easier than the problems later in the book. Yeah, it's really? Yeah. What, what am I missing here? Of course, nothing's easy until you see someone show you. But once I show you how to do this, you'll see this is much easier than the problems earlier on. Yeah, I have little English part of it, so it's a good question. So we're doing page 29, number D? Now the most important thing to see to understand why this is so easy is he's not asking you what the actual peptide is. He's just asking you for a possible peptide. Right. He's just asking us for a peptide that would possibly give these results. So we can make up anything that would be consistent with the results. Well, they told us that when they used the chymotrypsin, they got two dipeptides. and a tetrapeptide. Two dipeptides and a tetrapeptide. I've chosen to put them in this order, but you could choose different orders. And remember, there's more than one possible order. By the way, how many cleavages does it take to make three fragments? Only two cleavages. To get three fragments takes only two cleavages, as we can see here. Now, looking up in our table, we see that chymotrypsin cleaves on the carboxy side. I'm sorry for this We're 100 percent this little thing will be on there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, he's definitely gonna give you this table. Great. Uh, unless he's changed what he's done for uh, so in the past he's always given the okay. table anyway. So unless he's totally changed things. So we're gonna cleave on the C end. Now we need to have memorized that this is the C end. The C end is on the right hand side. I think of a non-commissioned officer. That's called carboxy side. end? What's yeah. the end? Like the amino end? Amino end. Okay. This is called the N end because that's where the amino terminus is, the nitrogen. NH2. Yeah. Okay. And this is the C end because this is the carboxy terminus. Okay. Great. So chymotrypsin cleaves on the carboxy side of hydrophobic aromatic residues. So it could be cleaving next to phenylalanine, tryptophan, or tyrosine. But I'll just pick the first one phenylalanine. So I'll put a phenylalanine here and I'll put a phenylalanine here. And that would account for these cleavages. Chymotrypsin would want to cleave here and here. I should not be putting the phenylalanine here, because it doesn't cleave on the amino side, it cleaves on the carboxy side. You could have put terp or ter. You could have used terp or ter. And if I wanted to, I could have put these in a different order. This is just one possibility. So far, so good? All right, now based on this, I'm going to put FPHE here and PHE here. Now looking at the next one, trypsin. There was the two tripeptides and a dipeptide. One, two, three. One, two, three. And a dipeptide. I chose to write them three, three, two, but you might find another order that works for you as well. This is just one possibility. Now trypsin cleaves next to say arginine on the carboxy side. So I can put an arginine here. This does not contradict what I've said previously. And I can put an arginine here without contradicting what I've said previously. And that's the whole point with all those experiments, right? They're all kind of like isolated different ones, but they don't contradict the ones before. Because you know you it's have important, like six yeah. different ones. Well, it's important that what you write down in one step doesn't contradict your conclusions from the previous okay. steps. Right. That's true. Okay. What would I do if this was contradicting my previous steps? Well, then I would have to get a different ordering. Maybe instead of doing 332, three, I could do 233 three, three or something so that I could make these consistent. It shouldn't be too hard to find an ordering so that it's possible to, to make these consistent you with may each have other. To change them. Okay. That's right. For example, 
I could not have put the dipeptide here. Because then I would have to put arginine here, and that would contradict phenylalanine. So if I started with that, I'd have to say, gee, I guess I guessed wrong. And then I would have to do this instead. So you might have to do a little trial and error on these. But I've, I haven't found that it takes that much trial and error. Now I'll move the arginine up. What I'm writing here is what I figured out about the overall structure. And then we have the thermolysin. And that, he told us, is cleaving into a heptapeptide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And isoleucine, I-L-E. Or I could have written it like this. But ILE, um, thermolysin leaves ILE on the amino, so it can't be the bottom. So we should have put it on that one, right? If thermolysin leaves on the amino side. Does that mean that this, this is the right picture or the bottom is the right picture? Yeah, this is the right picture. What about that one? Does that work then? Well, it would work if you also put an isolacine. Uh, no, it wouldn't work. Okay. It wouldn't work because that would suggest that the cleavage should be here in the void, which is impossible. Okay, yeah, that would suggest that it cleaves on the carboxy side. So one thing that's really important is to actually write down your N and your C so we don't get confused about which is the N side and which is the C so side. So if there's nothing to the left of it, then, it, cause that, I don't then there's nothing to cleave. Okay. You can only cleave. Cleavage means breaking one amino acid from another. There's no such thing as cleaving, so it's cleaving you from nothing. So over here, when they said that it's cleaving on the amino side, well, no, he said what it's cleaving yeah. on the yeah, it says on the amino side. What he really means is that it's cleaving on the left, because the amino side is the left and the carboxy side is the right. Okay, right. but it has to be on the left of to the left of something of it, like it to the left where there's an, where you join another amino acid. Yeah, because That's you could right. say to the left of it. That's true, but it would be nonsensical to say that you're cleaving the bond over here because there is no bond okay. over here. That's you right. wouldn't put the isoleucine on that second to last spot because the phenyl's already there, right? Yeah, but also, we can't put it there because he told us it's that the heptapeptide was separate from the isoleucine. Although I suppose it's possible, I suppose it's possible that this could have been isoleucine and, like and this could have been isoleucine too, but then that would contradict our previous right. work. Okay. All right, cool. so for various reasons, it's much easier to draw it like this. But again, I'm not saying this is the only possible way you could have worked this out. There's probably other orderings you could have done as well. That puts the isoleucine here. Now, there's nothing more we have to be consistent with. So now we can just put almost whoever we want in the remaining blanks, but just don't put anybody that's in this table. Yeah. Because then that would, you would have to have predicted further cleavages. So a good safe thing to use is glycine. Glycine is so boring that it's not going to have any other reactions. And I think that's what your instructor usually does. I think this is the exact answer he has in the book. But remember, your answer does not have to be exactly like this. I, I think he even says in the answer key that many other answers are possible. So these might take a little trial and error. You can't assume that your first guesses will work out. If your first guesses don't work out, you might have to shift things around a little bit. But it shouldn't take too much guessing in order to find something that's consistent with the results.